dad a doctor and you go and you say, okay, here I am. I have no record. How do I get off this? And they go, sorry, can't tell you. That's directly out of 1984 where you don't know how you get on a list. You don't know how you get off a list. And then you go and literally the TSA some places is nice to people. Other places is shouting at old ladies, ordering them to get out of walkers. The daughter says she's got cancer. She's going home to die. I saw this happen in an airport. Uh, and, and they're telling her, get up, get up in the Houston airport. And the, and the woman couldn't get up. So they're calling cops over to threaten a woman to get her mother up. And I literally started saying something. I said, that lady is about to die. She can't, she got oxygen tanks. And they said, buddy, you better watch it or you're going to not miss your, you're going to miss your flight. We'll have you arrested. And I mean, repeatedly, I've gotten in arguments watching them harass people. I've been with Jesse Ventura when he's gotten mad, literally when they were going in his, grabbing his genitals, these, these people at the, at the uh, airport in um, Atlanta, he blew up and left the country over it. I mean, right. all I'm saying is Jesse Ventura, the former Minnesota governor, they know who he is going, hi, governor, hi, I like your TV show, grabbing his testicles. And he, yeah. I mean, and I even took photos of it. We went and had food while we were waiting for our flight for his TV show. And he said, yeah, that's terrible. Erase it. I don't want it to be seen. But then he talked about it on air. I, I mean, this, how does grabbing Jesse Ventura's genitals or checking a baby's diaper keep us safe when people with turbans on their heads are walking right onto the plane? Alex, I, I came from a state police agency prior to uh, joining the Air Marshal Service, and I can tell you that the system at the Air Marshal Service and within TSA structure is broken. And I also can tell you that we even had air marshals that were on the list. So somebody has to explain it. Why would you, and I've flown with this same individual that Mr. Preston flown with, and I've flown with him, and when you're paired up with these individuals who are on the no-fly list, air marshals, by the way, you're flagged as well. There is no way. I mean, this this uh, guy that I, that I worked with, he went to a supervisor. He did repeatedly a paperwork to get off the list. You can't get off the list. So that, that just tells you it's not updated. It's not current. And, and, you know, early on, they were just throwing people on the list. And they've never cleaned the process up. They've never streamlined it. And they've never really eliminated the real threats. That's why we keep talking and pushing these things out there because we're getting ready to get into the travel season of the summer. Holidays are right around the corner. You've got all the problems and unrest in the mid, uh, Middle East. Something has to be done. But like, like we said, we, you know, that's why we keep doing it. We've been at risk here the entire time from our internet uh, being tapped. We've had people jump over our fences in the middle of the night in dark clothing. Notes left. We've been followed. Um, the harassment and intimidation. I know that you spoke well briefly with Dan Bongino about that last week. Let me just tell you, he's not, he, he's not really telling you how bad it can get because you see these other documented cases like in Cincinnati where the air marshals were being followed and all these different things. It, it goes on and they, they don't, they're relentless. They don't let up. Yeah, you got air marshals' wives that have been followed to malls and, and pictures, they walk right up to them and take pictures of them. Intimidation, it, it's incredible. And yet you have, yet you have, at 23 separate occasions, according to our reports, U.S. intelligence agencies show at least 16 alleged terrorists have traveled through at least eight separate airports with the BDO program in place and would never stop, and also with the no-fly list and was never stopped. But yet, federal agents are on this no-fly list, doctors like, you're, like you're, you're a father, Jesse Ventura, who else would you want on the airplane with you if there was a problem, right? Okay, on the no-fly list. Come on, what the system is broken. We know that. We have been trying to expose this for a long time. And, and these, but we, we, we cannot, we get places, congressman says, yeah, we're going to do something. We met with congressional leaders. We met with congressional attorneys. They're going to do it. Nothing's done. And the reason, the reason that we, we're pushing for the Congress is because we need a backdoor session with these guys and senators and let them know because there's problems with the instrumentation. We can't go into that here because it's procedural and certainly they would flag us for that. But there are a lot of things that the public's not aware of, and we need to sure, be able to sure. somebody to well, fix Well, it's them. not just that. I want to ask you guys about this because you're such experts. I mean, I could talk for five hours with you. I hope you could go a little bit in the next hour, at sure. least till five after when Klein joins us and come back for a full hour for a special report uninterrupted sometime on the nightly news so we can tape it and then add documentation, news articles, and video clips to back sure. up what you're saying, congressional testimony, you name it. But I want to understand how I've seen things like uh, Wolverine security in San Francisco, you name it. 
and this was years ago, but private security literally searching World War II vets that were going to fly to Hawaii for a Arizona memorial. And these guys were on death's doorstep. This was like six, seven years ago. I bet they're all dead. And being harassed by security that didn't even hardly speak English. I mean, the stuff I see in airports is so bizarre, I can't even figure it out. I mean, I don't even know what the point is. I mean, where is this coming from? You know, Alex, they, they go after the wrong people because they want stats. They're, they're, they're not trained enough. They're not educated enough, okay, to go after specific terrorists, okay? They want stats. So what do they do? I was there. I've, I've heard an audio tape. Go after the blacks. OK, but they're the ones who have the warrants. But that's not that's not the word they use. They use they the use the other word. OK, now here's now here's the deal. So so really it's about general dragnet policing, which violates the Fourth Amendment. Absolutely. And not only that, but here's the deal. They will go through to try to get stats. Their main thing is get stats. I stopped 500 people today. OK, it may be 500 old ladies or a combination of, of veterans or doctors or, or Jesse Ventura's. OK. So they put down the stats. So again, they get more money in their budget. Right. This is about this is about the budget. This and isn't about protection of, of, of the public. And I, and I will tell you, I had an incident there at the Orlando airport where I was on duty and someone ran through the checkpoint. Now, TSA, uh, they they uh, shut the train down so the individual couldn't make it to the other side where the gates were. I'm uh, identifying myself with my badge and my ID, and I'm attempting to get to the subject because I know that I'm the only police officer between the entrance point and that, uh, the train, and do you know that the TSA officials grab me and put their hands on me? Now, they're not supposed to touch anybody or grab anybody, but yet they're preventing me, the only law enforcement officer, from moving forward. And that's oh, no, that's what I was reading, is that they tell the police what to do, and the air marshals half the time, and, and, and then I've seen the reports where where, I mean, they just do insane things. So you're trying to chase the guy, and they're stopping you. They're stopping me and tell me I can't go any further. They're not even police officers. And yet that's the system that TSA, the non-police, that's what we call it. Really, you're looking at the Federal Air Marshal Service, and I want people to understand, it's really a civilian entity running the police department. And it, nowhere else does that happen. But within this government system, that's what's happening, and that's why... They're tying their hands. I, I remember sitting on an airplane with, then at that time, Senator John Kerry. We're coming into Washington National, and he, he knew who I was, and we were talking, and he says, well, what do you think of the program? And I said, Senator, by all due respect, in a nice way, this is about what I get to do as a air marshal. You're tying my hands. And let me just tell you, as a state police officer, I held my hands as far apart as I could. That's what I was able to do. They're tying the hands of the officers and making it very difficult for them to go after the true terrorists. I mean, don't you well, think? Well, exactly. Look at what they're arming ISIS and, and, and letting them go after Iraq and Syria and then acting like they don't know. I mean, look, bottom line, the political class wants a police state. They don't want criminals targeted. They want the general public taught to be processed like prisoners. This is social engineering. That's why none of it makes sense to peace officers like yourself that actually want to go after bad guys. You're sheepdogs trying to go after wolves. The truth is they just want you to become wolves. I mean, that's really what it comes down to. Oh, here, here's the Alex, here's the thing. They want no cases, no problems. This is a country club environment of retired Secret Service guys. Okay, From, from the 1980s. From the 1980s. And, and, and you can look at, what's that book called? Kessler's well, book of... Uh, well, listen, uh, listen, guys, I'm going to give you the floor, but listen, I don't know the inside. So, so, so tell me what you thought of my statement. Is any of it accurate? But expanding, you know, uh, one of you fellows was kind of shaking his head, so I want to hear what you're saying. You're just saying, no, it's beyond that. It's total uh, laziness. Explain that to me, Steve, and, and then back to Henry. Uh, laziness in what, what aspect? Well, well no, I mean, I was bringing up how the political class wants the police there to train the public to be slaves and to feel like perps, uh, but but doesn't want you to go after the real criminals. And, and I was I wanted you to comment on that, and then you brought up the fact that it's just a country club. Go ahead. It's, it's, a, it's smoke and mirrors. In order to make the public feel safe after 9-11, then they, what they did is they set this whole false uh, thing up to make you feel added security, added instrumentation, that by the way, and the majority of it doesn't work. Uh, uh, letting the people and the public go, hey, we've got air marshals on the plane, but yet less than 1% of the airplanes are being covered. Well, a great example of that was this uh, incident where on Christmas day, that 777 
where the guy was attempting to blow the plane up. At that time, Delta Airlines only had 11 giant airplanes. Are you telling me that the Federal Air Marshal Service can't cover those 11 airplanes? And yet, we didn't have anybody in place to cover those airplanes. That's what we're talking about, a false sense of security where the major targets aren't being covered. So you're saying it's pure security theater and it's not even set up to go after a threat? 100%, sir, 100%. It's a complete, absolute disgrace and failure. And the American public is being sold a bill of goods that is, that's all it is. It's just a bill of goods and you're paying for it. $800 million at the last check for the, the current budget. At one point, it was $1.2 billion. Sure, sure. Where's that money going? I want to go back to Henry so you get his point. And then I want to ask you, it's not just in the air marshals, obviously. It's everywhere. This culture is creeping into, it, it's in business. It's in life. I mean, America... It's just really losing touch with reality. I want to get your your take on where it's all going. But what was the other point you wanted to make, Henry? Well, I'll tell you what. You know, here's supervision that wants to take flights, and this is this was uh, I guess when I was there a couple of years ago. Um, they would take flights just to go on little vacations. Okay, they would say, okay, we're going to try to cover this flight, whatever. Go over to a golf course overseas, spend a few days there, and come back and say they're they're working, they're covering a flight. This has been going on for a long time. I, it, it just, it's a country club. They, no cases, no problems. And when the supervisors get caught or in a certain bind and they realize that they, like the one fellow was caught on the airplane sleeping, we, we, we expose that. He's got a loaded weapon on the airplane. Uh, what, they, what did they do? They, they try to put a little pressure on him about the investigation. Then he just resigns out. He's able to keep his retirement, and nothing ever happens. And they go, well, we fixed the problem. Well, you didn't fix the problem because it continues to go on, and the public suffers. We have another guy that's a supervisor that went over to, to uh, uh, another country and jumped inside of a manger scene to steal baby Jesus during Christmas, and nothing ever happened to him. And here you go. What, what did he graduate from? A, uh, West Point. West Point graduate. And he became a superman. Meanwhile, there's a phenomenon of TSA agents stripping down naked and declaring their God. Uh, things like that are happening. I, I mean, literally, you're talking about the federal marshals, and, I'm, right. and, and obviously there's some issues there. You're, you're, you're the experts. But for me, the real craziness is the stealing. And how many times I've had things stolen out of my bags, like a Tiffany baby rattle I bought for my daughter. When I was in New York, they just stole it, opened the box up, then it was gone. Money, uh, everybody I know that has medication, I'm not on any medication, people I know that are on medication, sleeping pills, Dr. Pachinik has talked about it, you know, his sleeping pills have been stolen. I mean, most people I know have been robbed by the TSA, and, and they're always getting caught. I mean, what is going on? Soft, soft points in the uh, in the security is what part of that problem is, and that some of those uh, stories have been exposed nationwide in the local re reports that are out there. Uh, we, we air marshals are reporting this type of stuff where where guys were getting in or or, or secure, security breaches, um, but it just doesn't seem to change. It's it's about uh, you just doing your job. And I had a supervisor told me he said, "What did you think when you came over here that you were going to do besides sit in a first class seat and look at the seat in front of you?" And I just I was absolutely floored by this. And this is a guy that came over from U.S. Customs. He retired out of there, and he ended up being my supervisor when the agency was ramping up back in 2002 2003 and i just i was appalled by that i i came over after 9 11 with a deep sense and love for my country to be able to serve the country and the people that are here hold on so steve stay there back in 70 seconds for the conclusion third hour coming up jam-packed stay with us this is gcn the genesis communications radio network General, what do you think about the FBI saying that there's a terror alert on Monday about a potential Fort Hood situation? The police are shoving people, shoving Alex, shoving the crowd. Here we go, folks. I'm being assaulted. Whether it's the radio show, the news websites, documentary films, or the nightly news, InfoWars is the tip of the spear. Is this another false flag stage attack to take our civil liberties and put more homeland security by sticking their hands down on the pants on the streets? It's up to us to set brush fires in the minds of men and women everywhere. And that's what PrisonPlanet.tv is designed to do. You watch the Assad 
Assad regime is going to be blamed or accused of using chemical weapons against the so-called rebels. What we see now is a war against reality. It's a war against the truth. It's more vital than ever that supporters of freedom become members of PrisonPlanet.tv and share their membership with up to 11 friends and family. Visit InfoWarsNews.com today. Become a member, share your membership, and help take the Infowar to the next level.